But your God, it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. So don't worship yourself on Instagram. Some of you are going on Instagram so much, you're worshipping yourself. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Some of you are swearing like gangster rappers. Don't be swearing like gangster rappers. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Sabbath day, Sunday, is a day of holy to give to God. Honour thy father and my mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord giveth thee. Some of you have no respect for the police, you've no respect for law and order. You've no respect. Thou shalt not kill. Some of you are violent and angry at home. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Some of you sleeping around when you shouldn't be. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't sleep around. Thou shalt not steal. Don't be stealing from work. Don't be stealing from college. Mike, Mike. Don't talk too loud on the microphone. Yeah, it's on there, yeah. Thou shalt not steal. No stealing from work. No stealing from college. No stealing from university. No stealing at, at home. No stealing. Thou shalt not steal. Have you stolen this week? Have you stolen this year? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Have you abundant? He wants you to have abundant life. Is it abundant life? Sat in your bedroom smoking wacky wacky? That is not abundant life. That is a wasted life. Your parents didn't give you money to spend on wacky wacky. Jesus Christ came to die on that cross and shed his blood for you. He wants to touch your life and fill it with joy and peace and hope. He wants to fill you with love. He wants to fill you with his goodness. Jesus says, I have come to give you life abundantly. And more abundant. Abundant life. Abundant joy, abundant peace, abundant hope. Abundant grace, abundant goodness. So why do you smoke wacky barky? Why do you waste your money on wacky barky? Jesus is better than wacky barky. Jesus is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he can fill you with joy and peace. He's better than porn. No, it's fucking not. He's better than porn. No, it's not. He's better than drugs. He's better than sex. I'm going to stop you right there. Sex outside of marriage is no good. Jesus says he wants to give you life. There's a lot of powerful people in high places who want to deceive us. But sound, the sound faith is Jesus Christ. He doesn't deceive. He is the beautiful saviour who tells the truth. He's the beautiful saviour that gave his life for us. He doesn't deceive us. He tells us the truth. He said that he's the lamb that's come to shed his blood for us. And so here Paul is warning that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So don't be deceived by the media. Don't be deceived by the world. Don't be deceived by all that goes on today. But remember that Christ is the truth, that Christ is the way, and that Christ is the one that can save us, that Christ is the one that can speak into our generation. Christ is the one that can speak into our times. Christ is the one that can deliver us in these days. Christ is the one that can help us. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. But speaking the truth in love 
We don't condemn people, but we speak truth in love, but we speak the truth. We have to speak the truth, because the truth will set us free, the truth will open our eyes, the truth will show us what is the right thing. You cannot have love without truth. A lot of people today, when they go on these Trump marches, anti-Trump marches, they want to be open-minded, but they want to be open-minded without the truth. They want to love without the truth, but you can't have real love unless you have truth. Truth and love go together. If you say to a little kid, don't go near the fire, you're telling them the truth and you love them. Truth is so important and love is so important, but truth and love go together. And Jesus showed truth and love at the cross. He was truthful. Just got, just recording now. So it's just... Have you been lying? Yes. Thou shalt not lie. I shall not. Thou shalt not lie. I shall not. Thou shalt not lie. I shall not. Thou shalt not lie. He died for your lies. He shed his blood for your lies. He gave his life for your lies. He shed his blood. Are you Muslims? Yes. Nice to see you. Have you read the Quran? What's that? Surah 634, do you know what it says? You know what it says? It says this, my word cannot change. That means the Bible cannot change. And why is there 64 different versions of it? Well, in Surah 634, it shows you that if you read the chapter, it's about prophets. And he's saying the prophets' words cannot change. Now the prophets is the Bible. Yes. The new standard version, the King James version, they're just a bit confusing. Okay, let me explain to you. They're in English, yeah? Yeah. When you translate in English, there's going to be different translations. So where's the original one? Yeah, but we have, when you talk about the Greek and the Hebrew, original, that's not changed. In fact, if you read the Quran, it actually says that the Bible's not changed. Can you read Greek? I, I'm not an expert in Greek, I know a little bit of Greek, but at my church we have, excuse me, let me, let, uh, at, my, at my church where I go, we have a guy and he can read Greek fluently Is there a Greek Bible? and you can talk to him on the phone now. Is there a Greek Bible? I'm asking. There are, yeah, the Greek manuscripts. You know like you've got imams? Yeah. Yeah? Imam. yeah. When we're trained, I'm like, I've been trained like as a priest. You, when, you're, when you're doing a sermon, yeah. you have to know a little bit about Greek. I see. You see? Alright, but, but what about Uthman? Have you read about Uthman? Uh, if you read Bukhari, if you read Bukhari, if you read Bukhari, if you read Bukhari, it says that Uthman burned Qurans. Do you know about that story? Yeah, but it's not quite as you're saying. Maybe you should find the Christian values of fellowship, charity, if you get a bit of money. If you, if you, if you read Bukhari, it says that Uthman burnt the Qurans. They were. So it shows you the Quran's changed. All right. God bless you. Yeah. Confess and believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Rivers of joy will flow in your heart. Rivers of peace will flow in your life. Rivers of hope will flow in your life. Your life will change, and there will be peace and power in your life. You'll move in a different way with hope and joy in your life. If you confess 
that Jesus Christ is Lord. And you turn away from the drugs, you turn away from the sex, you turn away from the gambling, you turn away from the pride, you turn away from the worldliness, you turn away from political correctness, and you turn to Jesus. When you turn to Him, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Rejoice, and again I say, rejoice. There is a joy and a peace in Christ. A joy that you can have. A hope that you can have. The rivers of God, the joy of the Lord will come and fill you. The joy of the Lord will give you strength. The joy of the Lord will give you peace. He'll give you hope and grace and love in your life. If you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that He died for you. You can go to church and you can go every week but it doesn't mean to say that you believe Him in your heart. You can be seen as a good person but it doesn't mean to say that you believe Jesus in your heart. The devil believed Jesus but not in his heart. He didn't change his life. But you need it. You need His love in your life. You need the joy in your life. You need the hope in your life. You need the peace in your life. And He will give you the love and peace. He will bind up your broken heart. If you are lost and broken today, there is hope for you today. But He will come and comfort you. For He is the God of all comfort. Come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He will give you rest and peace in your heart and life if you trust in Him. But if you trust in political correctness, you're going to go to hell. Political correctness is not biblical correctness. It's not what the Bible teaches. Scotland needs the Bible, not political correctness. Political correctness comes and goes, but the Word of God is forever and ever. Chairman Mao in China had a day of burning and he burnt all the Bibles. Today, there are 70 million Christians in China. Scotland's political correctness will change, but the Bible will last forever. Trust in Him now while you can. Trust in today. It's the only way for you. The only hope. Don't pull out political correctness. It will smash your mind. You need to be renewed in the Word of God. You need to be renewed in the Word of God. You need to be renewed in the Word of God. In all the Word of God in your life. Are you alright, mate? What's up? Well, it's called democracy, guys. Get used to it. God, it's called democracy. People died. People died in Scotland for you to have free speech in me. God bless you. Have a lovely day, sir. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely day. God bless you. No, I'm here to preach the gospel. Jesus Christ. He gave his life. He died for you. God bless you, sir. Jesus died for you. He gave his life. Don't swear like a gangster rapper, sir. Jesus Christ died for you. He gave his life for you. He shed his blood for you, sir. He gave his life for you. Whatever you believe, I respect sir. God bless you. Jesus Christ died on that cross, and he shed his blood for you on that cross. He died for you on that cross. And if you trust him, you can know his peace. There is power, power, oh unworking power. In the dark of the land, there is power. On a cross, sir. He died on a cross for you and shed his blood. Are you an atheist? What do you believe in? What should I believe? So, is there meaning to this world? Is there a meaning to this world? Which is why you have good meaning every day. Yeah, but you have good meaning every day. Do you, do you believe there's such thing as love? Do you believe there's such thing as love? I don't believe in love. Yeah, but how do you get love from evolution? Do you believe in evolution? Do you believe in evolution? Do you believe in evolution?
So what? You don't believe in evolution. You don't believe in love. Because you said you didn't at the beginning. So what do you believe in? Well, one day, one day you're going to die. And when you die, what's going to happen? You won't die. Everybody dies, bro. Everybody dies. Everybody. All the scouts. All the scouts. All the scouts in this city are going to die, but not you. Why is that? You die. You're not going to die. You die one day. God bless you. He died on that cross for you, yeah? He shed his blood for you. And he gave his life for you. And that's how you can know the Lord, by knowing that He shed His blood for you on that cross. That He gave His life for you on that cross. And if you trust Him as your Lord and Saviour, you can know Him as your Lord and Saviour. Does that sound like this one? No, I'll tell you what, look out, look out. It's about Jesus. Everyone's smiling, everyone's smiling. And I came here the morning after I saw you. I tell you something, go have some rest. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. Let's go and have a good time. Let's go and have a good time. It's going to be a happy 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 time. Enjoy your time. Have you read the whole book? It's very good. You've got to believe in your Lord and Savior. It says Jesus says this. Jesus says you can have everything. You can have all the money. All the girls. Everything. Without Jesus. So you know what? That's the only thing about Islam is going to have four women. Four women. That's why I stick to Islam. That's why I stick to Islam. That's why I stick to Islam. Four women. Let's go. When we die, when we die, you know what we want? We want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Such tenderness for us that he would die for you and me, that he would shed his blood for you and me, how much have you lied? How much have you done wrong? And yet, he died on that cross for you. He hung on that cross for you. You laugh, you mock, you do these things, but he died for you on that cross. He died for you on that cross. And he hung on that cross for you. Every lie that you have done, every swear word that you uttered, every bit of anger that you had. He hung on that cross for you and shed his blood. Don't come under. Yes. It's a small camera, really, isn't it? Of course. Yeah, it's good to see you anyway. Hi, folks, we're in Manchester today, sharing the gospel, and uh, about to preach today, so I uh, pray that God will bless us and be with us. Hi folks, we're here today to share with you about the gospel, about Jesus Christ, that he is the saviour. And I just want to show you the madness of unbelief. You know, you say, well, I don't believe there's a God. I don't believe that there is a God. Well, did you know that all the information in the world is not as much as the information in DNA. That's how much DNA information packs in. No way could a mind, uh, no way could chance produce that DNA. That DNA could have only come by God. It could have only come by a mind. The madness of unbelief. If I was just to put a load of sticks on the floor, how much chance would that write something? 
If I threw sticks on the floor, would it write anything? No. That is unbelief. But a mind wrote the DNA. A mind produced the DNA. And that mind is God. And God is a holy God. It says, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. God is a holy God. He's a holy God. And because He's a holy God, He has given us the Ten Commandments. Don't lie. Have you ever lied? Have you ever lied? Don't steal. Have you ever stolen? Don't commit adultery. Have you ever committed adultery? Not today. Don't curse the name of God. Have you ever cursed the name of God? We've all made mistakes. And that's why we become guilty. He says, all fall short of the glory of God. You got any questions, sir? All fall short of the glory of God. But God didn't leave it there. God didn't just say, I'll condemn everybody. He had a plan, and that plan was to save people. And he came in Jesus Christ. And it was prophesied that he would be arrested. It was prophesied that he would be taken. It was prophesied that he would die on a cross. It was prophesied that they would crucify him. When he went on that cross, he was dying on that cross for sinners. He hung on that cross and shed his blood. And that is the only way to be reconciled to God. That's the only way to know God. The only way to know God is by that cross. On that cross, Jesus Christ gave his life. On that cross, Jesus Christ died for your sin. He died for your sin on that cross. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you forsaken me? Have you got a question, sir? Yeah, God bless you. Are you Muslim, sir? No. Christian, yeah. Why have you forsaken me? And he hung on that cross and he died as a savior. And we can be reconciled to God. We can know God through that blood. That blood makes the way to heaven. That blood makes the way to God. Without that blood, we're dead. Without that blood, we have no hope. Now you might say, Jay, I'm an atheist, and I can prove that your faith is wrong. Prove it. If you're an atheist, come and prove it. I can, I can silence you within one minute if you're an atheist. Come and prove it. If you're an atheist, there is no God. DNA has information in it. Only information comes via a mind. Mind produces information. And in the DNA, there is more information in the DNA than the whole world. That's how much information is in the DNA. It's packed full of information. Who put it there? Who put that information there? It demands an intelligence. An intelligence put the information in the DNA. You could put all the information of the world on a pinhead. That's how much information is in the DNA. That's how powerful it is. We cannot say that we're here by chance. We cannot say we're here by chance. Have you got a question, sir? Do you believe in evolution? Yes. Uh, give me some evidence for evolution. Huh? Okay. Okay. So is that your is that your evidence for evolution? I'll give you some evidence against it. You can give me some for it. Dinosaur fossils. Okay, dinosaur fossils. What is evolution? What is it? Yeah. Random mutation. Random mutation and natural selection. Yeah. yeah. Now, can chance produce mind? What? If I throw some sticks on the floor right now, what are the chances of those sticks saying, I love you? One in a million. One in a million. So how come, if I threw some sticks on there, and the chances are it won't go, I love you, yeah? 
But something more complex than that, a sentence, is the DNA in our body. There is more complexity. There's more complexity in the DNA than that simple sentence. And yet that simple sentence could not be created by chance. Do you agree? Well, it's it depends how Okay. Before the beginning of the universe, what existed? Nothing. Yeah, well, yeah, it's yeah. Nothing. And when we say nothing, we mean nothing. Yeah? So, can nothing produce a sentence like, I love you? If there's nothing there, if, if, if there is nothing there, can it produce a sentence called, I love you? So, so if there's nothing in the universe, how did there was nothing, how did it produce something more complex than a sentence called DNA? DNA is three billion bits of information in the DNA, right? So it's infinitely more complex than a simple sentence. And yet, if you're saying there's nothing at the beginning of the universe, and you're saying that nothing could not create a sentence. The latest data suggests that it was uh, not nothing per se, but like a quantum mechanics string theory, kind of like, you know, kind of chaotic state with I don't know, how many dimensions. Who, who's Valencian? Valencian? Yeah. One of the greatest, greatest physicists in the world today. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and he says no, that the universe had a beginning. At yeah, the beginning, if it had a beginning, well, the law of thermodynamics. What's the law of thermodynamics? The law of thermodynamics shows us that we had a beginning, and that is the main. That is the one of the assured laws that we have. So, if the universe had a beginning, it must have been that there was nothing there. If there was nothing there. How did something come from nothing? You cannot get complexity from nothing, let alone a sentence. But the DNA... Yeah, what's that just doing? So, so, if you're trying to prove the existence of God, God is just an abstraction of something that we can't understand anyway, so what's the point of trying to... Have you heard of the pre-Socratic philosophers? No. Pre-Socratic philosophers discussed this topic. They said either the universe had a mind or no mind. And throughout well, this is the what yeah, no, let, let me just explain. So throughout the centuries we've discussed this. And even today we've not got rid of that question. It's still here. So science can answer certain questions, but there are philosophical questions that are still around that will not go away. And it's more intelligent to believe a mind created the complexity of the DNA than chance, than nothing. Maybe, well, well I mean, I believe the pantheistic notion of God, which is that it's just the universe. You believe in a God? Yeah, then the pantheistic notion. This pantheistic... Not the, not the, not the uh, Christian not the theology, not the, the... Yeah, exactly, not all the, not all the theological, okay. not all the stuff that trap comes with it. How do you region. know this God? Just from my life experience. People in my life experiences and seeing a sky and life. It's nature, it's nature. Well, the Bible, the Bible says by nature we can know God. He said God is can, nature. We can, have, we can have some kind of knowledge of God. Nature is God and God is nature. Okay. Okay. But when you say pantheism, is this, this God personal? Well, in the sense of... Can you have a relationship with this God? In the sense of seeing the nature, yeah. Well, nature, yeah. A person, does not a person love and communicate? Oh well, yeah, human beings yeah. as well. So does this, God, does this yeah, God that you talk about as a pantheist, does this God love and communicate? Yeah, yeah, through people. Through people? Yeah, because so, we are nature. So, so God is nature now? And so there's no difference between God and nature, both the same. Well, yeah, there's interchangeable words you want to use that. So is God a spirit? Or is God material? If you want to put it in those yeah. can, can I just finish, can I, can I just finish the conversation? No, 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 he's asking, no, I'm having a conversation with this guy, yeah? You have to, you're saying that God is nature, and I just asked a question, is God spirit? Well, it depends on what, Jesus what do you mean by spirit? Well, Jesus says we must worship God in spirit and in truth. Yeah. So there's a differentiation between God and nature. Uh, on, the Jesus, on the Jesus point, like, he was a, he was a great philosopher and a great man. But to 
do I believe it's supernatural? No, and I've read the Gnostics and all the rest of it. I know we kind of yeah, the Nag, there's the Nag Hamdi, which is the, the, uh, the true teachers of Jesus. Uh, not like the, the okay, that, uh, what century were these written? You, you read about the, the Hamadi? Yeah, yeah, Nag Hamadi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You read them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, you, have you compared them with the Gospels? No, I'm not trying Well, if you read, if you read these Gnostic Gospels, which I've read, yeah, I've got a list of them here. If you read them and compare them to the four Gospels, they don't mention very, very little, very, very, very little, they don't mention anything about Jerusalem. If you read the four Gospels, they mention in detail all the places in Jerusalem. And the four Gospels really the first century and, and the, the Gnostic Gospels the second. You can explain one point. We found manuscripts in Egypt, in ancient rubbish and the the Gnostic Gospels are written in uh, small, small handwriting. I think it is. It's what one of the one of the, I can't remember I exactly. Remember. But they're written in a newspaper style of that time. And the four Gospels are written in a style that was seen as authoritative to, 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 to be read authoritatively. Yeah? So. We, Don't show love, don't 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 be gooey like these Christians that we and then when he saw a horse, not not what he was saying, he was attacking Christianity for homing in on love. And then he and then he goes and hugs this horse because he felt so there was a contradiction there. Is your God a God of judgment or not? Is he going to judge? 
Okay. So it'll be whatever, I mean, it's chaos if you want to get rid of So you're saying that your God doesn't judge? No. In the Bible, Paul says, So if there's going to be a day of judgment according to Jesus, then you have to be worried about it. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm not going to be worried about it. I'm not going to be worried about it. Well, for the sake of argument, if there is a God, the God I'm on about, right? And you come to it. Yeah. 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 I will come back to you in a second. You can have a discussion with me in a second. But if there is a day of judgment, just for the argument's sake, how are you going to stand on that day of judgment? And, and, and would you go to heaven? But have you ever lied? Have you ever done anything? So when God judges you, how do you know you're going to stand on How do you know? My, my, my view is, right, is that Jesus took my judgment and he is the righteousness of God and he died on my behalf. And if I and believe on him, I'm, I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven. So I have to live a good life, but I'm not facing it on my behalf. He gave his life to So what? I'm talking to this guy. We can talk to you in a second. No, we can have a dialogue, but I just want to talk to this guy. Yeah? No, no, I'm not trying to catch you. No, we'll, we'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. I promise you. In one minute, one minute, Jesus Christ died on that cross. Now, there's evidence for that. There's no evidence for your position. He's not going to judge. People judge each other. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Right, you can come in. God, are you a Muslim? What are you, an atheist or a Jew? You're, you're a Jew. Yeah, okay. Jesus says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In the Old Testament, God used those terms. God is true. God is the way. You know when 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 God led the Jews through Israel, when He led them through the desert, finding the manna. Do you remember? Jesus says, "I'm the bread of life." The Passover and the bread is all about God. It's about the so, so, so what I'm saying is that Jesus used the terms that God used for Himself. In fact. Fact, it was so annoying to many Jewish people at the time of Jesus that they wanted to kill him for blasphemy. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Set of laws for a certain people to, to 
How do you explain this? The prophet Isaiah. He is despised and rejected in man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have hid every one of his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of his own. How do you explain that as a Jewish person? Listen, who wrote it? Isaiah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you're out of the shop. Oh, they're coming out to play today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I saw Elton a few times. Yeah, I've just been on the phone to him. Oh, yesterday. yeah, he's always asking. Yeah. He said he saw you recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've only just arrived about half yeah. an hour ago. Right. And Jason interviewed me. He wants. Yeah. And it says exactly what it says. And he wanted me to help this camera for a while. So. He wanted me to help this camera. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. I had you. Yeah. You're like, sis. Nice to see you, love you. Yeah. I'm alright. You're alright. June, you know Isaiah uh, 53, yeah. where it says he was bruised for our iniquity. Yeah. Just that. Is that. That is in the Bible. And it's in the Hebrew Bible. Yeah, it's, yes, yes. Yeah. Do you believe that? It's there. Do you believe that? That's what they're waiting for, actually. He's saying, why is there a new, a new Testament? And I'm saying, well, it's for all. Old Testament The Old Testament. Will you just say so? Because it says so in the word of 
Isaiah chapter. Isaiah not, not, not in the Old Testament, it doesn't. It does. Isaiah chapter it, 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 nine. There's no reference to Jesus in the Old Testament. Isaiah there's chapter no nine. To Jesus. No. Isaiah chapter nine. Talking about in the five books, the original Old Testament. Not. These are facts. Yeah, he said Jesus doesn't mention a, that he's not Jews God. Jews know Messiah will okay. one day. Jesus is not the Messiah. Okay. He said Jesus he isn't know God. God. Let me show you. Jesus isn't God in the Old Testament. Okay, who's this? This is Messiah. Isaiah, Moses. Isaiah 9. I'm talking yeah. about the original, original, original. No, the five books of Moses. Let me finish. Isaiah chapter, Isaiah chapter 9. Okay. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Let's talk about the Messiah. Jesus. It's Jesus. How can we know? Because the Scriptures say in the Old Testament. The Old Testament says you will never know until he told me. He came. It's supposed to be Elijah the prophet. It's supposed to be Zimri. Okay. John the Baptist. Was John the Baptist a prophet? John the Baptist was not a prophet. Was not a prophet no. Well, in his time, he was accepted as a prophet. He got, he got his head cut off. By who? Not by the Jews. No, he was. He was accepted by the, the Jews as a prophet. No, he was. He was. Read, read, read it. He's even mentioned in Josephus. Read Josephus. Josephus so mentioned Josephus actually wrote accurately. Yeah, well, he, he says, this guy says, Josephus wrote accurately. Well, he mentions John the Baptist. Not being a prophet, though. Oh, he does. Yes, he does. He does. Who, Josephus? Yes. He said that, that yeah, John the Baptist. Yeah, he was respected as a prophet. Where do you believe in God? Or where do you go in the middle of the story? Whether it's true, he still loves you. He gave his life. He gave his life. I wonder. Good to talk to you. Nice to talk to you. Take care, mate. Nice to talk to you. See you soon. Take care. Nice to talk to you. Alright. Nice to see you. Are you still coming back? Are you well? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I lost it for a couple of minutes, but I got it back. Oh, it was me. I didn't realise he was... Um... <laughs> I thought it was before then. I was oh, sorry. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. I got... I...